All right, let's dive in. So climate change, it's already having significant impacts on our ecosystems, economies, and communities. Rising average temperatures do not simply mean balmier winters. Some regions will experience more extreme heat while others will slightly cool. Flooding, drought, and intense summer heat could result. Violent storms and other extreme weather events could also result from an increased energy storage in our, uh, in our warming atmosphere. One of the most serious impacts of climate change is how it will affect water resources around the world. Water is intimately tied to other resources and social issues, such as our food supply, our health, our industries, transportation, and ecosystem integrity. The impacts of climate change are already being observed across Canada's diverse geographical regions. Canada's forests are expected to be among the most vulnerable in the world to climate change. These are among the most vulnerable, uh, sorry, uh, these forests support countless species and ecosystems and are among the many examples of at-risk habitat. Another is melting ice sheets and alpine glaciers, which take an immense toll in our Arctic ecosystems. These threats are, ex are expected to have a major effect on world's economy. For Canada, a country that depends so much on our natural resources, the economic impacts could be severe. We're already seeing ominous change. Rising ocean temperatures in Canada's west coast have weakened economically valuable salmon species, reducing the survival rates of spawning fish. Scientists say that forests in British Columbia have been devastated recently by the mountain pine beetle, which is thriving thanks to unusually mild summers. Uh, winters. According to BC Ministers of Forest and Range, as of 2012, the cumulative area of provincial crown forest affected was about 181,000 square kilometers, which is an area of timber more than five times that the size of Vancouver Island. The value of these trees is in the billions of dollars. In 2001, prairie drought cost the Canadian economy over $5 billion in agricultural losses. According to the University of Manitoba, the mining industry in Canada is also vulnerable to climate change, including those from reduced water levels for freshwater ponds. According to Munich Reinsurance Corporation of Canada, the economic losses caused by natural catastrophes are likely to bring home the effects of climate change and more and more dramatically as time goes by. The world's most in-depth analysis of economic costs and opportunities of climate change is the Stern Review. It's a 700-page report that's released by former bank chief economist Nicholas Stern. The report concludes that early action to reduce the impacts of GHG emissions could cost only 20% of GDP, but it warns that the cost of delaying action would result in a significantly higher economic cost uh, by not adverting to climate change and promoting the growth of development. In fact, this solution to climate change will also bring about many economical benefits. Emissions from agriculture and the extraction of forest resources accounted for about 10% of Canada's emissions in 2014, and they're not projected to significantly change by 2030. Agriculture, soil, and forests also absorb and store carbon. The emissions or removal from carbon sinks can fluctuate with natural disturbances, but there are still a number of actions that can increase carbon storage and reduce these emissions. Forests, wetlands, and agriculture lands across Canada will play an important natural role in a low carbon economy by absorbing and storing atmospheric carbon. Restor actions taken by jurisdictions and woodlot owners to accelerate reforestation to continuously improve sustainable management practices and to plant new forests where they do not currently exist will enhance carbon storage carbon and continue our innovation and clean technology in agriculture as we build on past GHD. Uh, Innovation in clean technology and agriculture will build on past GHGs and reduction success by decreasing emissions by per unit of production. And this approach will include, one, enhancing our unit of production of forest and agriculture lands. It will also, secondly, support the increased use of wood in construction. And, and three, adver, uh, advancing our innovation and technology. Forests, wetlands, and agriculture lands can be enhanced as carbon sinks through actions such as planting more trees and improving forests. But carbon management practices minimize losses from fires and invasive species, restoring forests that have been affected by natural disturbances and increasing adoption of land management practices, like increasing perennial and permanent cover crops and zero-till farming. Producing, protecting and restoring our natural areas, including wetlands, and can also benefit from biodiversity and maintaining or enhancing our carbon storage uh, practices. Increasing the use of wood for construction can reduce emissions such as carbon stored in that uh, wood that gets locked in for long periods of time. Boosting domestic demand for Canadian wood products will also support vibrant forest industries across Canada, which has a long history of innovation to develop new products and more efficient and sustainable forest practices. Innovative solutions that require to reduce emissions from agriculture, wetlands, forests, 
are promising new technologies that are being developed uh, to reduce the emissions from crop production, uh, such as uh, precision farming, throughout the use of drones, which is accountable of 80% of the commercial drone industry uh, currently. So drone technology can be used to support agriculture, conservation, environmental protection strategies, which offer quick, easy, and cost-effective aerial imagery on demand. From glacial feature modeling and erosion monitoring to wildlife counts and species identification, the list of projects that drones are being applied for uh, are, and being used for continue to grow. There are many reasons for professionals such as environmental engineers and scientists to be able to use this increasing technically advanced drone technology for terrestrial surveying and traditional aerial imaging services. The benefits these professionals often include are a few main points. They're extremely flexible. Drones can be launched on demand, uh, weather permitted, without need of source for booked manned aircraft services or to commission or wait for satellite imagery. Timeliness, UAVs produce complete up-to-date imagery. This is making drones suitable for time-sensitive projects for monitoring locations at regular intervals. Efficiency, unlike traditional surveying techniques, using a drone is fast and it requires minimal staff and using an aerial uh, approach overcomes common site access issues such as imp uh, impenetrable vegetation, boulders, and crevices. Cost effectiveness. The, per, the, the, the cost per project of professional drone systems is typically lower than that of a third-party alternative, such as manned imaging aircrafts. Drone systems of, often provide a complete ROI in as little as a few months or a few large projects. They're discrete. Small, light electric-powered drones, especially fixed-wing aircrafts, make very little noise. They're often bird-shaped, meaning that they look a lot like animals as a bird, and they don't have, uh, cause much uh, influence on any of the wildlife below. Um, rotary wing drones, on the other hand, they're sometimes ideal for monitoring charting smaller areas, but uh, our feedback for on live uh, fixed-wing UAVs is much more preferable to wildlife um, that are in the area. In conclusion, uh, governments and direct, are directly responsible for a relatively small share of our, our, our emissions. But they do have an opportunity to lead by example, and there are a number of provinces that are already demonstrating leadership, including through the production of carbon neutral policies. And Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, said, in the completion of individual ambition, serves the common good, but that is incomplete, because the best result will come from everyone in the group doing what is best for himself and the group. And that's governing dynamics by Nobel laureate uh, Steve Nash. And with, with or without Canada's participation in international climate change agreements, we must demonstrate the international pro uh, process that can, that can take important steps, but not yet lead to emission reductions, but speed up the magnitude necessary to achieve these goals in Canada. The corporations can make a significant impact and, re and significantly reduce the emissions by increasing energy efficiency, investing in research and development, and insisting on emission reduction from suppliers. And drones, they offer a way to monitor, manage our bountiful resources. In agriculture, or forestry, in mining, to transportation. Battle lines against climate change are being drawn. To triumph, we must result, we must create results, publishable, practical results. And today, we place Canada's environmental future into your able hands. Thank you, merci, uh, merci and miigwech. Thank you, Ryan.